A big consideration for any investment, and particularly for stocks, is an understanding of the risk of that particular investment you're going to make, whether it's an individual stock or a stock mutual fund or whatever it might be, and how to calculate that risk so you can kind of compare when you're making investments so you have an understanding of, hey, this might be a very risky stock or risky stock mutual fund versus one that is less risky. And when we talk about risk, we're really talking about volatility. How much does it go up and down? How What is its ranges as far as you know the returns on the this type of investment because that's an important as far as understanding what might be uh, you know to your own level of risk and how much you can kind of stomach as far as something going down 30 percent can you handle that or having these wide swings or do you want something that might be a little safer investment and less wide swings so you're looking at that variance that volatility now there's two big measures around that there's a lot of measures but the two big ones that are out there which are standard deviation and beta. And standard deviation, you see a lot around mutual funds. A lot of stock mutual funds talk about standard deviation. Uh, and then a lot of individual stocks, you see in comparison, they're looking at beta. And they're two different things, similar as they calculate risk, but how they come about it are a little different, standard deviation and beta. So we'll follow along those same principles and think about standard deviation around mutual funds and stock mutual funds and beta around individual stocks. And we'll take a look at that in the next lesson. We have some examples where we'll do a demo and we can kind of see where to find this information and, you know, and see how it kind of works. So let's get started with standard deviation and let's think about that in terms of let's say mutual funds but it could be anything but really let's think about mutual funds and the idea is that you're trying to get an idea of the variance or measure how the fund compares to its own average it's not comparing to an index or anything a beta actually does that but comparing it to its own uh, measurements its own range of of highs and lows all right and you're really trying to look for that variance, that deviation from the standard or the mean, the average, right? You're looking for that variance. So, for example, if you have a 12% annual return or average annual return, that is a 12% average annual return over a period of time, like let's say three years, five years, whatever, you're looking over a period of time. If yours is 12% average annual return and your range of that is some years it's 8% or some years it's 16% over that period of time, say three years, anything, you know, that would be a standard deviation of 4%, right? You're 4% below and you're 4% high. That's your range and that's your deviation behind it. So there's a quick way to think about that in terms of, let's say, returns and, and returns of, of, of a fund or returns of an investment. So basically, the greater the swings, the higher the standard deviation. So if I have something that trades in a more narrow type of gap of, let's say, it's a 12% return with a high of 13%, a low of, of 11%, well, that would be pretty good investment by itself, but let's say that's only a 1% standard deviation. That's pretty, uh, pretty safe, actually, and less risky versus something that has a high standard deviation, a high level of volatility. And the more volatility, that's another way of thinking about the more risk that you have on it. You actually don't realize these gains until you sell, of course, but you can see how it might vary over time. That's why stocks with a high standard deviation over a short period, you know, you might lose money because you're only going to hold it for a year. Well, you don't have a chance to maybe come back if it, if it ever does or a mutual fund to come back. You still might want to make that change just from better investments, but that's why stocks and stock mutual funds are a longer term investment because they have higher standard deviations than let's say like a bond or cash. So that's standard deviation comparing highs and lows versus its own returns, its own measurement. Another way to look at stocks and stock risk is beta. And beta is really good to use for looking at individual stocks. So a lot of people use standard deviation with mutual funds. You could use beta with mutual funds too. But uh, a lot of people use stocks or use beta for individual stocks. Because the difference between that and standard deviation is standard deviation looked at the individual investment comparing itself. Beta looks at the overall market and compares that individual investment towards the overall market or an index or you know, you know, comparison within, within the index, for example. So if it's an S&P 500 index that's being compared to and you have one S&P 500 stock, let's say it's Apple or whatever, you can get a beta measure to see what is the volatility as compared to the index. So if you have a real volatile index, you know, like a stock index or a technology stock index, the whole thing is going to be more volatile than maybe something like utility companies, which are just by nature less volatile. But you can compare to a larger market using beta. And there's a measurement or a number behind that. You don't have to worry about calculating the number. In the next lesson, when we do the demos, I'll show you where to find the number fast and easy. But basically how it works is a beta of 1 or 1.0 matches, uh, matches the index or matches what you're comparing it to. So if it matches the index, it's going to have a beta of 1. Let's say an individual stock is going to match an index. If it has a beta of greater than one, um, you know, versus let's say the index, then uh, the higher the number, the bigger, the greater than the number of one, 
well, then that's the more risk or the more volatility in comparison to the index. So if it's a greater than one, it's going to go up and it's going to go down more than the index uh, as terms of risk and return and reward over terms of volatility. If the beta is less than one, that means it has less risk in compared to, this and to the index. So if the index is way up, this won't go up as far, but if it goes way down, it won't go down as far either if it has a beta of less than 1.0. So in a nutshell, 1.0 is kind of the standard comparing to the index. And if you're above that number, you're a more risky individual investment or risky stock, more volatile. And if you're less than 1.0, you're less risky or less volatile, less changes in your price over a period of time. So standard deviation and beta are a good way to look at things and say, boy, is this a risky investment? You know, is there a numerical measure I can use? And yeah, these two will help you out with that. So in the next lesson, let's take a look at a couple mutual funds and a couple individual stocks so you can kind of see where to find this information and what it looks like in action.